compare like my first year, second year, last year. But uh, honestly, I don't really, you know, it's like the three points is not my game. You know, you guys know like my game is more like mid range. You know, inside a uh, inside a three. So it's no, I'm I'm not really like you know trying to force myself to shoot more threes. You know, because it, it's not my game. But it's good to have like you know threes too. But yeah, it's a good thing to hear that. I mean, like from a, since I got drafted, you know, uh, that's one thing I've been working on, you know, since day one. Um, of course, like, you know, I'm putting a lot of time and work and, um, but it's more like, you know, for me, it's like more confident, like uh, have more confidence in shooting three, uh, more comfortable uh, shooting and stuff. That's that, that actually like, you know, helping me to get to this point. Some players that there's a difference in confidence doing something in practice rather than a game. You know, yeah. It's a totally different story. What was that process like for you, just getting crossing that line to get comfortable? Yeah, that's a different for sure. Um, but for me, it's like even the practice, like I, I'm imagine like you know shooting a game, you know shooting like a game. Um, you just gotta imagine like you know you need to have a good you know imagination, you know like you somehow you gotta think like you know whatever the crowds or like, you know, the feel, you know, even like a cold in practice and out there is a little different. So, you know, um, you just got to imagine like I'm shooting on the out there at the arena. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, you need to practice for that, you know, it's not like a, something like you can just change your mind and do it. You know, you just got to need a lot of reps and then uh, practice for that, yeah. Really, since you've gotten here, the roster has changed like a million times. <laughs> How does having to play with so many different point guards, so many different guys on the, like, you must always kind of be adjusting chemistry pretty much since your first year? Yeah, for sure. That's that's the one thing, you know, um, start getting used to it because, you know, think about it in a college, like high school, whatever, like we play the same, you know, yeah. same guys. We don't have a trade or like, you know, transfer. I mean, maybe we have a transfer, but like it's nothing crazy, you know. But pro, you know, here NBA is like always like changing. So, but you know, <clears throat> end of the day, you know, we have a, we know our goals is, and then uh, we know we have our like basic, you know, um, standards. So we know what we have to do, uh, offense, play defense, play, um, and then play together. You know, um, especially like I play with the Brad, uh, Ish. Uh, TB, you know, those guys, you know, for a long time, Raul, you know, so it's a good thing, you know, um, and then other new guys, you know, for the same too, you know, they I'm still getting used to it still, you know, but we have, I think we have a good chemistry, you know, together. Does having to learn to play with all those different people aside from Brad and everybody, does that like make you better because you have to learn how to shift your game? Does it, or do you just like focus on it doesn't matter who's around me, here's what I'm gonna do. I think, yeah, of course, the basketball is, you know, uh, team sports. So, you know, we need to, um, feel, you know, feel the like, you know, other four guys on the court, you know, floor. It's different, you know, um, who plays and who. So we just need to feel like what they what they like, what they don't like. And they need to run like, you know, how what I like and what, I'm, what I don't like, you know, my strengths and weakness. So it takes time a little bit, but, you know, um, for sure, for me, it's like it's getting better to like adjust, you know, quickly. So yeah, it's a it's a good thing. Yeah. You've been back for two months now. Do you feel like you're in mid-season form? Say that again. Do you feel like you're in a mid-season form now that you've played for two months? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think you know, um, I'm more like I have my routine, a game day routine, and all that. And I think. Uh, you know, um, the team is still trying to figure it out, you know, but um, I think we, we're, in a, uh, we're in a good position um, to make a playoff still, um, you know, uh, playing tournament and stuff. So uh, I think, yeah, we can make a, uh, we can make a push. Did your time away from basketball change your love for basketball and your appreciation for it? Yeah, for sure, you know, um, <clears throat> You know, I, I've been playing basketball since I was 13 and then 
honestly, I think I don't know how to talk about it, but like, you know, I play basketball almost like a full nonstop, you know. Um, in Japan, like we don't have a like season, you know, we play basketball whole year. <laughs> so like there's no literally like a, you know, off season kind of, you know, thing. So I play basketball almost the whole time and even the college, you know, like, um, okay, we just, there's a season, but like, you know, the summer I played national team. So like almost like, you know, like, I don't know, I played basketball nonstop since I was 13. And then finally I kind of sat down and then, you know, had a time a little bit and then how much I love basketball and I miss it. And, you know, especially in this level, you know, the NBA is like highest level. I think one of the best leagues in the world. So yeah, it's, it's fun to, you know, I'm so blessed to be here and play with these guys and yeah, just, yeah. Um, I want to ask you about getting to the free throw line. You know, it's been kind of an issue for you guys the last few games. Um, what, how do you feel kind of like your responsibility is in just, in just generating free throw attempts for the team as one of the, the better offenses there is? Uh, you talk about like uh, for us? I, I guess for you individually, like um, what's your approach to getting more free throw attempts? Oh, yeah. I mean, just got to be more aggressive, you know, uh, down the rim, you know. I just got to get some more con contact, you know. Um, and then I'm more, you know, but right now it's like, I'm like, you know, I'm shooting pretty good from a three. So, you know, and the team still hasn't figured out. So, you know, I, there's more space for me to just shoot three over, you know, rather than like, you know, trying to force myself to get into the room. But it's coming, you know, um, I just gotta get more aggressive and yeah, trying to get to the room. What's it like to, to see Corey's be a part of, of Corey's rookie season? I think he's been great. He's been doing great, you know. Um, I remember my rookie year, you know, it's tough, you know. Especially this, um, like, you know, we just talk about, like, you know, that always, the teammates always changing and all that. And he's actually starting, you know, a lot of games. So uh, it's hard for me. I remember that my first year, you know, just uh from the beginning, I just started a game and uh, I played like a 40, well, I mean, the 30, 30 minutes a game. It's no easy thing, you know. Uh, you got to figure out a lot of stuff off the court on the court. So, I yeah, think he's been, he been doing great here. You think his extra time in college uh, has helped him? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He stayed for four, right? Four years? Yeah. That's for sure. Helped him for sure. Um, he's a. Uh, <clears throat> He's a, he improved a lot of stuff, you know, um, I can see, you know, and I know he can be better. He can be, he's going to be better too. So I'm excited for him. Speaking of Gonzaga, have you had a chance to watch Chet Holmgren play? Yeah, I watched it like a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on him? Is he, you know, he might be in the league next year. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a, he has a lot of potential for sure. Like, you know, and he's like a seven, some one or two and uh, he can shoot. He can move. He's actually a good defender, you know. He can block a lot of shots. So, yeah, I'm excited for him, yeah, too, yeah. All right, Rui, we'll transition to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Chris Miller. Hey, Rui, I want to go back to uh, the game before the All-Star break when you guys were in Brooklyn, specifically in that fourth quarter where I thought you played with a lot of joy. Uh, there was one play where you were going to the bench and, you know, you had your tongue out and you were just smiling from ear to ear. Can you describe when you play with that type of joy, what the game of basketball means to you? Uh, <clears throat> for me, it's like uh, those are coming like natural, you know. Um, it's very like, you know, um, natural thing for me, you know, just having fun playing basketball. Um, especially that game, it was, a, you know, we are winning. And it was all before the All-Star break too, so. We we're just trying to win the game and then uh, have a good break breaks until you know we uh, we are out there, you know, hooping. It was it was really it was yeah for sure a fun game, but yeah it's a, it means a lot you know. I mean, I'm that's my one thing like you know I'm always thinking about. I mean I always talk about is like you know have fun you know. It's the one thing I'm really always thinking about. So yeah. Thanks, Roy. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Neil. Hey Rui, just in this you know last you know ten plus game stretch where you've you know been really shooting the ball well from three, have you noticed that teams are closing out on you harder and maybe potentially giving you you know then more lanes to drive? 
Um, I think so, a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah. I mean, especially yesterday was, you know, I could tell, you know, so that's why my mid-range game was open. So it was easier for me to, you know, get into my spot. Uh, yeah. And then I know earlier in the season when Spencer had a chance to hit a, I don't know if it was game tying or winning three, you had run onto the court, you know, kind of oh, hoping that, you know, it went down kind of same thing when Kuz let his shot go, you know, I think you were kind of running after him. Did you, think it was going in do you were you just hoping that huh, I really want to be able to celebrate you know one of those kinds of shots oh uh, you talk about last night right the yeah the shot yeah I thought it wasn't gonna be because I, I was on uh I was by the rim and it looked good so I thought it was gonna be so going in so yeah it was a good shot thanks Roy mm -hmm. we'll go to Christos hello Roy hope you're doing well uh if you look back since the beginning, that, since your return in, uh, in action uh, this season, what did you say about your development as a player so far? Uh, for, from this season? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, of course, you know, everybody talked about my three points and uh, also defense, but, you know, <clears throat> I think I can, I can have more, like, concept, you know, and idea of, like, defense um, as a team, you know, I can... I can go one to five, and I think I've been doing that pretty good. And I, I know the coaches trust trust that. So yeah, those are things I think I improved it. Yeah. And at this stage of the season, how you feel? Where you feel you are physically and mentally wise? Uh, uh pretty good. You know, <clears throat> we have a uh, twenty more games or something for regular season, and I think we can make a push. Uh, for the playoffs, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, we just gotta be, in, you know, right track. Yeah. After recruiting, uh, what kind of stood out from last night's game that maybe we didn't have to about last night? Well, I think some of the similar issues we've been plagued with. Um, you know, the turnovers weren't egregious uh, as far as number, but uh, you know, just the value of those possessions you know, that that really adds up and matters. Um, the offensive rebounding has been a concern. Uh, we've been, you know. Uh, it's been a sore spot for us as of late. Uh, and then the, the free throws. It's easy to say, well, it's, you know, just one area. Um, you know, it's, it's the discipline uh, as far as individual containment, you know, uh, us shrinking the floor or lack thereof. Um, but just the force at which teams get downhill on us. Uh, we just have to learn. And some of it's just guys getting accustomed to playing uh, that style of game. Um, you know, the younger players dealing with that contact and being able to wall up show your hands and, you know, not be tempted to bring your hands over the ball. Um, they, they sound like simple details, but it they snowball. And, and when a team has a parade to the line, it just uh, really puts you behind the eight ball a bit. Uh, so we have to clean that up because the last few games, last five to seven games, it's been an issue. When you have 20 games left in the season, how much priority can chemistry building take? Like, is that as big of a deal now, even though you have – guys with different levels of familiarity with the organization everything like that but you're also just like you gotta win games yeah i mean it's kind of been what we've had to do all year uh we've had guys in and out um you know roster's been in flux for a variety of reasons for you know most of the season so um it's important to get that chemistry when you can and of course the priority is to win games but um getting the, those groups and the pairings out there together you know it, it, that's it's, it's a priority because uh, we got to see what we have now, you know, to you know, make decisions going forward. After last night's game, at least one of your players said that he, that he doesn't feel like the team gets to respect the tribute team from the referees. Is that what's going on with the, the lack of balance drawn, the shooting balance drawn? Uh, I don't know necessarily. I can't judge the officials' level of respect for us. and at times feels that way. Um, but you also look at certain teams that they play with a certain force, degree of force and physicality, and they do it all the time. So that's part of it. If that's the way you play, they're not going to call every bit of contact. Um, you know, at times we don't play that way. So when we do try to amp it up and be aggressive, it may be more pronounced, you know, as far as how the officials view it. Um, but I think also, you know, that, that respect has to be earned. I mean, what have we done, honestly, to, to warrant the benefit of a whistle? Um, our mindset can't be, 
you know, play for fouls. We have to play our game. We have to be able to control, um, you know, how we play, play with poise and not lose ourselves in that dynamic when, when things don't go our way. But, you know, I think it's just uh, there's a level of aggression that we can, we can be better at. Uh, and then maybe over time, you'll, you'll see some of that happen or, or go in our favor. But I can't get up, caught up into, you know, whether, you know, officials or other teams respect us or not. I can't control that. Uh, to some extent, but it's just not the, you know, level of attacking the goal. It's just even, um, you know, we said, talk about owning our spots, you know, your setups, uh, not getting wedged out of position, you know, and, and, and conceding at times, um, um, giving into the coverage at, at times. And that's not just us, that's, that's basketball in general. Um, you know, it, it's difficult to play with that level of intensity on both ends of the floor for 48 minutes. But, you know, you see those possessions and, it, and you maybe don't look at it at that moment as a big deal. But the, as they compound themselves, it, it does, you know, really add up. Yesterday after the game, you mentioned you might want to open up a really uh, playbook for the small ball five position. Um, is that also the case for the four position for him? Like how much of the playbook does he understand right now as he's being fed? I think he knows um, he's, he's probably most comfortable at the four. I don't think he knows all of it. Um, we've kind of kept that, you know, pared down a bit because, you know, of his late integration. And we want to make sure that there's, you know, limited confusion with what we're trying to do. Um, but we, we've seen it, you know, game after game, whether we're downsizing with him at the five, Kyle at the five, um, you know, playing, you know, him, Danny, Rui together. It's just uh, you know, those three guys on the floor, we have to make sure we're organized and how do we do that so um, keeping him more at the four maybe moving Kyle at the five on offense and then our matchups on on the defensive end will be you know we'll just target those you know individual matchups but uh, he's got to get more comfortable and it's just part of his growth and it may take a little bit of time and we don't have a ton of time to do that but uh, we also want to put him in a, in a position to have success so keeping it limited and, and kind of narrowed for him I think has been good All right, Coach, let's take some questions from Zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Coach, kind of just building off of Josh's question, do you ever feel the onus as a head coach when, you know, you see maybe a blatant missed call to, you know, even though it's not necessarily your nature, but, you know, to get fired up and get yourself a technical with the refs? Yeah, I think there's a place for it. Um, you know, I think it's also doesn't make sense in the moment. You know, we've seen time and time again that uh, we've kind of lost our composure. And it's not just for one possession, uh, it's two or three possessions or, or for a stretch. Um, and I think we get caught into that, you know, worrying about the officials and we lose ourselves. Um, I think it, it can help, but, you know, you, you can't have that in the fourth quarter. You, you know, we, we've seen that at times in, in big moments where we're, we're getting technicals at uh, miss, miss opportune times, you know, a lot of times for the wrong reasons. Um, you know, where, whether it's a buildup throughout the game and then that last instance, what sets you off, uh, you, you also got to understand the context. Um, is it worth making a point in that moment, you know, and, you know, stopping a, a bit of momentum or, you know, changing the momentum and, and giving it to our opponent? Uh, so, yeah, I think there's a place for it, but, you know, I'm not sure it's always the right thing to do. And then I don't think I heard anybody ask you, what was KP able to do today, you know, from a 1v1, 3v3, 5v5 perspective? Uh, he was a full participant, which was, uh, you know, another good thing to see. And so getting him out there again is just another opportunity to get him up to speed and get more familiarity with what we're doing. I guess full participant, how much like 5v5 scrim live scrimmaging were you guys really able to do? Was it a light day? A pretty yeah, it was a pretty light day. Uh, we didn't do a whole lot, um, you know, up and down, but it was, you know, a lot of script. I uh, handled some defensive concepts, um, you know, some some shooting, but uh, it was good to have him involved in everything. I know you've, you know, always held out hope, but would you say that there's an increased chance that he can make his debut tomorrow? Yeah, I think there is. Thanks, Coach. We will finish up with Christos. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Speaking about Rui's presence on the floor, do you expect more in the final stretch of the season? How how you see his progress and what do you expect from him until the end of the season? 
Uh, you said Rui? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's his growth in, uh, in all areas, I think. Um, his understanding of our philosophy, our spacing, the terminology, I think, is, is big. Because, uh, you know, he's got to process all these things quickly. Uh, and he's not the only one that struggled with it at times. I think Denny's had some issue. And, and that's just the you know, telltale sign of young players. Um, you know, Corey, all those guys have had some issues at times, communicating on the fly, um, you know, making decisions, understanding what's important and what your responsibility is in that moment. Um, but he's gotten better at it. So I think just the more reps he gets, the live reps um, will help. Uh, but I think it's uh, where he was from when we first started, you know, the integration process to where he is now, I think is night and day. Thank you very much. All right, coach, that is it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nope, everybody else was good. Oh, except Brad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vernon was out. I apologize. Yes, he's still out with the hip. Um, and he's he's probably gonna stay back on this trip. So he needs to get a little extra work in. Yes.